So, Apple, we may have a problem. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back. If you haven't been here before, well, thank you for showing up. I really do appreciate it. Maybe you'll stop by again sometime. That would be super awesome. Thank you very much. So I watched the whole Galaxy Note 9 unpacked event. And on the surface, yes, it seemed like the whole event was sort of planned to be about the Galaxy Note 9. But that was not all that we found out. And there were some shots fired early by DJ Ko, the head of Samsung Mobile. He talked a lot about closed ecosystems. There could only be really one company that he's talking about, and that company would have to be the fruit company of Cupertino, California, the Space Donut Dwelling Apple Corporation. That's all he could be talking about. He was talking about a, a lot of things about how open ecosystems with partnerships are a lot better than closed ecosystems where you make people be, you know, sort of beholden to you for everything. And um, I thought he was making some good points, some good points. The problem has always been that Apple developed their ecosystem and it developed into this walled garden where from soup to nuts on a horizontal base, on a horizontal scale, Everything that you need to be part of the Apple ecosystem, you can purchase from Apple, all the way down to the HomePod, all the way down to Apple Music, all the way down to your cloud storage, all the way down to everything, computers, iPads, iPhones, whatever else they sell, <laughs> could all be connected into this ecosystem that works together, that works in concert to blend all of your stuff together. And it works great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have been part of the Apple ecosystem for quite some time, and I really am impressed by what they have been able to do with that ecosystem. But what DJ Co. was talking about was an ecosystem that worked like Apple's ecosystem, only it wasn't only an Apple thing. Samsung has been uniquely positioned to try and maybe start some kind of ecosystem game of their own for quite some time, but it has taken them a while to build up to where maybe they're ready to do that. Now that they got the Note 9 and it's got, you know, decks built in and all that other kind of stuff, and Samsung makes computer monitors and Samsung makes uh, refrigerators with screens in them, they snuck in the announcement of their Samsung Home which is going to be their smart speaker entry. Uh, I don't know what it's going to sound like, and we don't know very many details about it, but I, Samsung talked a lot about bringing in external partners, partners who would come in and work with them. They're already working with uh, Harman Kardon company. Uh, well, they they own Harman Kardon, and it's, so they have a lot of AKG branding on their, their headphones, AKG branding on the Galaxy Home. They have AKG branding everywhere, but that's not the only thing that Harman does. Harman also has a bunch of other companies that are underneath its umbrella. These are all now open to Samsung for use. And a big part of their focus continues to be, and I have talked about this a lot, and yes, it's been, it's been frustrating, but Bixby. Bixby has been something that Samsung has been pushing for a long, long time, and generally, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody wanted it, but just yesterday, during this discussion of, of building an ecosystem and having it seamlessly work from one place to the next, Bixby took on a much larger role. Bixby is going to be the glue that connects the phone to the refrigerator, to the, to the Galaxy Home and beyond. And they showed off some of the things that Bixby is now capable of doing. In fact, the, one of the most impressive was using it on the Galaxy Note 9 for contextual conversational speech where it, you could talk to Bixby and say, I need a, I need an Uber for in 45 minutes. And it says, okay, it's going to cost you this much money. Or I need say like uh, dinner reservations and it shows you all the restaurants and you can choose the restaurant and it'll make the reservation for you. 
there are a lot of applications where Bixby, if it does in fact improve to this level where it's really a matter of talking to it and it listens contextually and continues to go forward with different responses for different pieces of input, maybe Bixby will be ready for prime time. And if that's the case, Samsung may be perched on the precipice of having the chance to <laughs> compete with Apple. Samsung makes all the stuff. They are not just a mobile device company. They are not just the computer company. They make all kinds of stuff. Now, if you could get that all kinds of stuff all connected and working with your phone being the hub of all that stuff, that would be really great. The one problem is, you know, Google has some Google Play Music, right? But, and Apple has Apple Music. And those things integrate well with Android and with the Apple system, although, you know, Apple has really sort of made the HomePod only halfway useful by allowing Siri in the HomePod to only really work with Apple Music and the rest you have to kind of do by, you, know, you, you kind of have to work around. Now, we don't know if the Galaxy Home is going to have Bluetooth or if it's going to work with different services or what, if it's going to be available with uh, Google Assistant or Alexa or any of those kinds of things. Although Alexa, I would guess not. Google Assistant, maybe. But one thing that Samsung announced yesterday that was uh, a shot across the bow was a huge partnership when it comes to music and how it's going to be completely integrated into all of their devices. That is Spotify. Spotify is still the largest music streaming service on the planet. And now Spotify works exclusively with Samsung to, to provide their music services. It kind of, maybe it gets lost a little in all the other things that were announced yesterday, but that Spotify partnership is going to be huge because if you're a, if, if you're a Spotify subscriber and you want to have the kind of integration that Apple Music users can have with Apple Music and the Apple devices, that's a huge plus for Samsung. People are going to choose Samsung if they want that kind of integration. So I really think that while Apple uses a closed system to integrate an ecosystem together that works seamlessly with almost all Apple products, Samsung may have done them one better by endeavoring to create an ecosystem where they're working with strategic partnerships with folks like Spotify to broaden their reach and potentially bring in more partners that will then work with them and challenge Apple for supremacy in this ecosystem war. Now, what do you think? I immediately started thinking about it and I immediately was kind of excited about Samsung's shot over the bow of the Space Donut saying that, uh, you know, we can do this too and we don't even have to be as restrictive as you are to do it. So tell me down in the comments what you think. Is Samsung going to create an ecosystem that could, in fact, perhaps best Apple's ecosystem? Or does Apple have it locked up and nobody needs to worry about any of this kind of stuff? I don't know. We'll have a discussion. It'll be down in the comments. I'll be there. I'll talk with you. It'll be nice. It'll be fun. Thank you so much for being here. If this was your first time here, I hope you do come back and you know how to make those things happen. If you've been here before, then I really appreciate every time you come back. Each and every one of you, I see you, Jimmy, and you, Sally, and you, Zach, and you, Travis, I see you all. Thanks again for being here. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest. Tech, so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.